Thank you very much. It was quite a presentation. Yeah, hello everybody. I'm Evgeny Yurchenko from Canada. Hi from Canada. A uh, couple of words about our company. Uh, we operate in Canada, of course, and uh, we provide basically help to our clients with two main things, monitoring and automation. When it comes to monitoring, obviously we love Zabbix, we know Zabbix, we are sure that Zabbix fits monitoring needs to 99% of our customers. When automation comes in, then it's actually Ansible, preferably Ansible. Yesterday we had great conversation from Andrew how uh, Ansible and Zabbix play together. I confirm this is true, just use Ansible and Zabbix, you'll be fine. Uh, now, where is my, ah, clicker. Let's jump to my presentation. Again, this is the fourth talk on this conference about modules. Uh, yesterday Vladimir started, today we nicely proceeded. We had a workshop today morning. Uh, why is this topic so hot? So the answer is simple. It's hot because it's hot. Just think about it. You're not just tweaking web UI. You are adding new functionality. So not only Zabbix team working on Zabbix, so the whole community can work on Zabbix. Make it better. Uh, little refresh from yesterday's. So MVC model is a core. You need to understand that to start developing modules, uh, efficient modules. Uh, briefly again, uh, HTTP request comes to controller. Controller massages data, gets all the data from model if needed, passes this data to view. View generates HTTP response, and your browser just shows this response. Nice HTML, CSS, JavaScript, whatever. Uh, Zabbix, yeah, it's important to remember. Web UI is just huge. Yeah, it's large, sophisticated, complex PHP application. But bottom line, anyway, it's just PHP application. It means it doesn't run somewhere in background, uh, like Zabbix agent, like Zabbix server. Uh, every user click on the menu item uh, means you run PHP application from scratch. It's initialized, executed, and exited. And whatever it prints, it goes back to a uh, browser where you see a nice HTML page. Uh, it's worth to mention that Zabbix doesn't use any third-party MVC framework which is very nice, we don't have any dependencies. Next slide. So for this demo, for this presentation, I picked one of my modules called Host Tree, and I slightly modified how you see a list of hosts configured in your Zabbix instance. Uh, this, this is default, so you basically see list of hosts, nothing special. I went a little bit further. When you enable my module, you will see this picture. First of all, you see new uh, menu item, host tree. And all your servers are organized in hosts group. Yesterday, Nathan had great presentation about making it nicer, organizing your stuff inside Zabbix according to host names, host groups. And here you can see tree of your groups, of your servers. Plus, you see, you can collapse any group, you can expand uh, any group, uh, basically you see hierarchy of your groups. And you see number of problems per group. Now, let's start coding. I apologize for, to those who don't know PHP. My uh, presentation is mainly for developers, so bear with me. Uh, here, this is a very simple thing. Any module has a, uh, has a easy child of core C module class. And init method of all modules, all enabled modules, is called. Every time user clicks any menu, menu item, all modules init method is called. This is a nice place to put your uh, menu item. So here we are adding host tree menu item under hosts, after hosts menu item, in monitoring section of main menu, pretty simple. One important thing here, you have to specify action. This is very important to select controller, we'll see you later. So it will result in this URL generated when you click on this menu item. 
And this action, exactly the same action, must be defined in your manifest.json. Now, Zabbix accepts this web request. Action equals host.view. It needs to select controller. So uh, control is selected based on a uh, huge associative array called routes. CRU here, where it's defined. Uh, this array defines for every action in the whole Z Zabbix web UI uh, three things, controller, layout, and view. Uh, we'll talk about control and view uh, later a little bit. Layout is very simple, it's a PHP. So whatever you want to deliver to user depends on layout. Uh, most used is uh, HTML page layout because it generates HTML page. Plus you see CSV, export, feel free to uh, explore these files and you'll see what, what's actually generated. So when it's CSV, basically you see a uh, browser presents you with save as dialog so you can save this file. So your, basically your task of your controller prepare data to save it to CSV. And if you're not satisfied, satisfied with these layouts, you can totally define your own layout. Uh, just put it in uh, views folder of your module, done, and use it. So this is how uh, all actions from your module, module is added, uh, added to this huge associative routes table. Uh, if uh, this is brand new action, it's just added, again, controller class, layout and view from your module, just added to this array. If uh, the action already exists, so if you want to override something in Zabbix web UI, you just specify the same action name and it will override Zabbix definition. So your module will be executed instead of Zabbix out of the box HP code. Naming, it's very important to keep naming intact. So class, what you see in red, it's about controllers. So controller class has to match PHP file class that defines your controller. And of course, it has to match class definition inside your PHP file. Now, how to start developing module? Uh, Zabbix is open source, just pick one what you want to modify or want you understand how it works and just modify it. So for my use case, I picked obviously C controller host view that generates list of hosts. I copied to my uh, module actions folder and heavily modified it. Uh, important thing here, you have to specify namespace for your module. Uh, it must be unique to all module. If two modules use the same namespace, the second one won't be loaded. You won't be able to enable it. So keep in mind, you have to define your namespace and it must be unique. Now, uh, we go to controller. So Zabbix analyzed your request. It sees an action. It knows from the router uh, name of your controller class. And uh, first of all, it calls check input of this controller module uh, class. In check input, you can just return true. It must exist in your module, but uh, you can do nothing there. Return true and go ahead. But it's very nice to check input parameters passed in HTTP request. Uh, Zabbix will do it for you. Just create an array uh, for every field, specify a rule according to which uh, checks must be made. You have, uh, you see here a bunch of rules specified in cnewvalidator.php class. It's about 30 or more different rules for all use cases. Just pick one, like name, must be a string, and so on and so on. Again, take a look inside, find a rule what you need, and use it for your fields. And then you call the validate input method. And Zabbix does all the work for you. If validation is OK, it returns true. When check input is done, everything is fine, all parameters are correct, uh, Zabbix calls do action method of your controller class. And this is where all the magic happens. So here you should gather data. You should prepare data. 
later to show this data to a user. Uh, you can do whatever you want. Uh, database access, API calls, it's up to you. But finally, you have to prepare a huge data array. Well, it m might be not, not huge, but usually it's quite substantial. And then when you have all the data ready, there's just three standard methods. You call them and you basically say, okay, controller, controller is done. We prepared all the data, let's move on. At this point, Zabbix moves to, to your view. Uh, here, we're just preparing output for end user, for your browser. And it's quite simple, it's not a class, it's just a file, PHP file, which is basically included in PHP terms or executed. So whatever you print in this file will go directly to your browser, to user's browser. You can put pure HTML, CSS, not a problem at all. So it, in PHP it's possible. Yeah, in this case, uh, as an example, I have a little table with headers. It looks not very nice, ugly. It's not Zabbix way. Instead of doing pure HTML, CSS coding, it's much better to use Zabbix classes. For every HTML element, button, input field, for everything, Zabbix has a class. So just use it like this. Create a widget, add HTML elements to this widget, and then at the end, call widget show. That's it. Zabbix will show everything to you uh, with nice CSS, nice uh, formatting, style, uh, Zabbix style way. Uh, as you see here, we already see familiar Zabbix interface. Uh, table is good. It even shows you that no hosts, no, no elements, no data found. Uh, again, all these HTML classes defined, uh, you can find in this uh, include classes HTML folder. Feel free to browse and I'm pretty sure you find uh, any, uh, you find a class for your HTML element, whatever you want to show to the user. Now, uh, this, is, um, sh this is a slide to demonstrate how you can access uh, data prepared in controller in your view class. Again, we have data like uh, here. This is what I say uh, we call model section of our MVC uh, concept. Because you basically, uh, without executing APL call, there is no HTML traffic, HTTP traffic here. It's just calling internal Zabbix function to get count of number of groups, configure, oh, sorry, hosts, configured in this Zabbix instance. And assign it to data, create a response, set response, standard methods I showed you above. Then in your view file, you can access this uh, data structure, data array, as simple as that. So all the data prepared in controller, once again, is ready for you to massage to here, to frame them in nice web UI elements, HTML elements, just like this. And you'll, you'll see nice, nicely presented header with number of hosts dynamically changing depending on how many hosts you have configured in your Zabbix instance. Now, uh, about fun stuff like CSS, JavaScript, most probably you will need uh, to include some CSS, some JavaScript. Uh, CSS is very simple, you just call standard method again, add CSS file and specify, specify full path name to your CSS file. Inside this file, you just put pure CSS, no HTML tags, nothing, just CSS and it'll be included in final page. Uh, for JavaScript, it's a little bit tricky. So uh, Zabbix itself has a lot of JavaScript written. Uh, they all for all these files located in JS folder, feel free to explore. If you wanna show some kind of filters, default Zabbix elements, most probably you'll need to include some uh, Zabbix JavaScript files. You do it using add JS file method you can include your own JavaScript code. And it's actually much more flexible because it's PHP file that will generate your JavaScript code. 
And here, because it's already view, we have all, all our data collected, we can use data inside this PHP file and generate JavaScript dynamically based on data we gathered in controller. Yeah, I use this function, include.js file, it prints JS JavaScript code, done, included in uh, final output. Now, very cool two methods, I have to mention them. Uh, on before action and on terminate. On before action is executed before code execution passed to your module's controller. And all the output it generates uh, is put right after head tag in your HTML file. So you cannot put HTML code there, but you can put whatever you want to put in the header section of your HTML page. Conversely, HTML on terminate method is executed the last. So after everything is done, it literally uh, registered in PHP, execute before exit. And here, all the output you generate in this method on terminate will be put directly before closing body tag in final HTML. So here you can put your HTML, CSS, whatever you want. And what's most interesting here is these two methods, or oh, I have a typo, it's on before action and on terminate, they execute it for all enables models. So it doesn't matter what menu item user clicks, these methods for all enabled models will be executed. This way you can affect UI as a whole. Uh, for example, I have very simple uh, module called Peace. Uh, I just was wondering how it works. This model doesn't have any controllers, any views. It just has one definition of on terminate method. That's it. And it changes Zabbix behavior globally, like this. Uh, obviously, you can do it, some might say, you can do it using, what do you call it, localization. Um, but you can replace this icon, yes. It's not localization, some different feature of Zabbix. Rebranding. Rebranding, exactly, thank you. Uh, you can change this easily, yes, using rebranding. But you can, cannot change this using on terminate method. You can use this as well. You can change this as well. Obviously, you can change, uh, you can put whatever icons you want here. It's just an example. A very simple module took me like one hour to develop. Um, yeah, all my modules available on GitHub. It's open source. Uh, feel free to browse, ask questions. Join us on Telegram. It's not only me, it's a bunch of smart people. <laughs> so if you have any questions, I'm pretty sure you'll find answers. Uh, basically, that's it. Thank you very much to Zabbix for making Zabbix and for keeping it open source. I highly encourage you to start developing modules so everybody can benefit. Because again, it's uh, UI, it's nice, it's easy to do. Just uh, see, uh, watch my presentation again when you have some free time. It's basically step by step. If you follow these steps, you'll develop very nice modules. Thank you very much.